Hello YouTube and today we're going to look at keyframes inside of Premiere Pro. So keyframes unlike in After Effects is actually mostly used in Premiere Pro for controlling the effects itself. So it's not used too much but um, it is something handy. Usually we use uh, After Effects for such uh, things but um, the option is provided right here. So keyframes are basically points with values. So the uh, value of that particular attribute changes over time. So I'm going to show you how the keyframes actually work in Premiere Pro, uh, unless we move on to animations later on. So now I'm gonna take this video right here as always and keep the existing settings. So right now what I have is a normal video and let me drag in an effect over there. So let me take an audio effect, sorry, video effect. Uh, go over to, uh, let's go for not distort. Okay, let's go for a simple effect first, like uh, stylize and mosaic. Okay, so I got the mosaic effect right here. And as you can see that the horizontal blocks is 10 and vertical blocks is 10 as well. So overall, in the overall video, if I were to play this, what happens is that the video, uh, the whole video stays the same. Actually, the effect stays the same in the video. So what I want to do is I want to change the options, change the mosaic to other options right here. So I can increase the horizontal blocks and my vertical blocks right there. So uh, let's say I do 70, but it stays uh, the same in the overall video. But by the use of keyframes, what I can do is I can gradually change the number of blocks that I want over time. So what I can do is I can click on this arrow right here and you can see that there's the value right there. So let's say I want the video to start like this uh, and then uh, I'm going to click on the stop what's right here. This is how I add in the keyframe. And once I add in, you can actually see that the toggle keyframe is here. So I can go out. Uh, till the end, let's say I want the uh, changing to stop over here and then I'm going to change this just like this and then you can see that a gradual keyframe changes there and it is shown by the graph right here. So let me just play it and see the results. So you can see that the effect actually shows up right well, but it ends quite abruptly, which I don't like again. So I'm going to do the same for vertical blocks. So I'm going to do zero, uh, add in keyframe, then go over here and go till here. All right, so let me see that how the results look. So it looks quite like this. So there you go. Uh, and then, uh, so what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to cut this off right here. And so I uh, cut this off right here, go in between, because I just want the animation right here. There you go. And then I want to delete the mosaic option from the second clip. So the animation quite looks like this now. All right, so which is cool. So there's a default transition uh, that, that I want. So what I can also do is you can see that there's a gradual change. And what I want is I want a kind of an acceleration and deacceleration to the keyframes. So what I can do is I can right click on my keyframe right here. I can use the is out option. And then you can see that there's a curve, a line of curve in the uh, a change of the settings. So I can increase this and I can see that I can increase the curve just like this. I can also do an A's in and you can see that I can do an A's in. So let me just drag this uh, at the side so I can I can see the other keyframe. All right, there you go. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna do an A's in. All right, so it's not giving me that handle right now. All right, anyway, so now you can see that there's a gradual change. I uh, made the curve just like this. So you can see uh, not much right now, but uh, after I add it in this, is in and is out, drag to make a curve, just like that. And once I make the curve, it actually accelerates uh, in a different speed as you can see here. So I can actually use this to control the chains of my uh, level um, my uh, the chains of my levels and then get the effect I want more <coughs> more effect uh, efficiently so I can do that with 
all the uh, settings right here, even the opacity, uh, even the volume, the channel volume that I did. So I can add in a keyframe to each and every one of them uh, as I want to. So I can go to noise and grains. Uh, so let's add in dust and scratches. Let's delete that out. So you can see that uh, there is no dust and scratches right now. So I can increase the threshold of dust and scratches just like that. All right, increase the radius. Okay, let me see a more prominent effect right here. So let's go for noise. Increase the amount of noise, decrease. All right, so I'm going to add in a keyframe just like this. Go forward and increase the noise. Go forward, decrease the noise. Go forward, increase the noise. Go back uh, forward and increase, uh, decrease the noise. So you can see that I have an effect like this. So I can add in an A's in and an A's out to all of them. I can do that uh, all at once, as you can see, which gives me a default curve-like settings. And I, I can even change the position of the keyframes according to what the effect uh, can look like. So I'm going to rearrange this just like this and then play this out. So you can see that the effect is quite fast right now. And if I want this to slow down, then I can simply uh, pull this out just like this and you can see the effect actually uh, happens quite slowly now. So this is how the effect is uh, with keyframes on. So I can also do this with audio. So I can go into audio uh, effects uh, and then go over to, let's say I'm going to use a reverb right here. And then I can increase and decrease the amount of reverb uh, let's use an audio clip for this so that it's more prominent. All right, let me grab an audio clip, seven floor tango, and then let me uh, lower down the volume a bit. So now I'm going to add in a reverb uh, and then uh, increase it just like this. So I can increase the size of the reverb, uh, decrease the size first, and then go over to the side and then increase the size just like this. So once I do that, you can actually hear. So the, the reverb gradually increases. So this is quite slow. Let me just bring the keyframes down, close it together. All right, and let me play it. So you can hear that the reverb actually increases over time as the keyframes actually change. So now the other way to use keyframe is from the pen tool here, uh, just like that. So uh, last time we checked out the keyframes right here. So if we were to right click, go over to uh, so keep, uh, clip keyframes, I, I can actually see the same settings over here. So I see a line of the keyframes just like that. So if I don't want to uh, change the bars over here, what I can do is I can control the keyframe from this place as well. So let me just go back, um, uh, bring in a video again, and I'm gonna show you how the keyframe actually works uh, in the video, just like that. So I'm gonna increase the size just like this. So you can see that there's an opacity handle right here, which is a default effect actually. So you can see that there's motion. We're going to cover up that in later, in later lessons. So actually the opacity right here is actually a default setting. So what is happening is that I'm able to control that directly from here. And as I change the handle, you can see that the set, the uh, value actually changes over here as well. So that's how you use keyframes inside of uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. And as always, hope you guys learned something and please comment, like, share and subscribe.